Okay, so I've got an extension of that question, actually. Just think back to the, so the Empersource boot camps we run here um, at, at the Reactor every kind of few months. Uh, we we want to get people to the point where they can contribute to an open source project. And every time we've tried over a weekend to actually get somebody to make a contribution, we failed because the onboarding ramp for projects is mm. hard. You know, so if you're brand new to open source, how do you get started with Kubernetes, for example? What is that onboarding ramp and what can open source projects do to um, reduce that barrier to entry so new people can make those drive-by commits? Yeah, so I mean, from my personal experience, um, I'm trying to think of the most recent drive-by commit that I did. <laughs> um, but I think that there's a couple different things that I would highlight. Um, one is good, good issue curation. Mm -hmm. So like saying, hey, this is a good first issue. And I don't think a lot of people do necessarily a great job of doing that. But I think that's one really big thing is help people find out. Because I've definitely seen times when people are like, how about this issue? It looks like it's really old. And you're like, yeah, that one's old for a reason. Um, uh, and then I think the other thing that I would hype a lot actually is um, dev containers which is something that GitHub and VS Code worked on together, where if you check in a .dev containers folder into your repo, someone in VS Code or in GitHub Code Spaces can immediately jump in with all the right tools installed, with all the right language runtimes, and just you know, CICD ready to go, like do all of that stuff. Because like oftentimes, for me anyway, the biggest challenge is like, oh, do I really want to install that language that I don't use and those 20 different library dependencies onto my machine and forget about them and then wonder my, my disk is full and all this kind of stuff. And um, <laughs> dev containers just has really transformed for me anyway, my ability to just jump immediately into the environment as the maintainers want the environment to be, make a quick PR, run it through the CI CD and, and, and move on, right? So. So I'll add one further bit to that, which is just remember that there is no community except that the community that you build and set up to foster. So Dev Containers is a great example of this. Good First Issues is a great example. Office hours for your um, from your maintainers for a particular set of questions is a great way to handle this. Now, um, being able to answer questions for people, but the the key bit for me, and I refer to it always as mean time to dopamine. So it's basically how quickly can I get to that, oh, that was cool moment, whatever it was, whether it was the CI CD system worked and all the tests were green, or it was the, I found that first issue and it's a thing I can attach. And oh, by the way, here's really good documentation about how to um, set up or engage with my first commit. So you know, like that, that work, that investment up front to try to make it easier for a new contributor has to happen. Like that, that is what brings people in. It's not that, you know, there are some savants out there who suddenly can look at any repo and go, oh, this is how I commit here. So it's that instant gratification. We need to really get that instant hit of get it working. Uh, Jake, any, any thoughts? Yeah, yeah. As long as it's not Confluence, I think I'm like, <laughs> sorry, we use it. But uh, yeah, yeah. Dev, dev containers over Confluence, I think that's probably the, uh, the, the way to go. Uh.